Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Mina Singh, Managing Director of Nubia India Private Limited. Gül Bahire Göktepe, Director of Nutec Energy Consulting Technology and Industry Incorporation, uh, President of Women in Nuclear, and Tokjan Seyfulina, Director of Kazakhstan Nuclear Society Association, and prepare to be blown away by their highly inspirational speeches. In India, if I specifically talk about, there are already hundreds of examples of women leadership uh, from way back, long time back, where the women were in the battleship also and being the prime minister or on the space station. Uh, but when I talk about a technical uh, um, uh, leadership, when we talk about the technical leadership, there has been uh, leadership changes I am seeing now more in the space organization, the defense, but not on the uh, core engineering, you know, core mechanical, fabrication, manufacturing, and in the construction. So what I believe is that we have to find a way to how to encourage and not only the girls, but the society as a whole, the men to accept that women can do all this work also equally well, because uh, it's not about a masculine or feminine, it's about the will and the uh, ability to do it. So if a, if a lady has a capability to be a mechanical engineer and you know do the fabrication or carry the project engineering she should be able to do so i see a lot of leadership in india as far as the finance sector is there banking is there it is there design engineering is there but and also the space and defense uh, where you have more of a design engineering work but as far as the core engineering when you talk about mechanical engineering fabrication and project engineering there is still a way to go forward and we have to make the way easy for them. You know, when the girls, when they're in the high school, uh, do they take uh, medicine as a subject? They do engineering. And even if they go to the engineering, whether to, to the IT or the, or the electronics branch or the mechanical engineering or the civil, you hardly see girls in the civil and the mechanical engineering. So the process starts from there. And then, yes, even when they are in the, uh, there are mechanical engineers, there are civil engineers, electrical engineers who are there in their company. There also, the, uh, there is a stereotype among the female leaders whether they want to send these girls to the site for the construction or not. And also, I think equally, there is some resistance from the girls itself, from the family itself. You know, I have a one example wherein we, I was supposed to go to a training to attend in Korea when I was a very young engineer. And there were three people who were selected, two male and one female, me. And I was asked a specific question to check with the family if they allow me to go there or not. When there is a leader in the leadership position, the woman is there, I believe she understands the situation. So it is the responsibility of the woman to handhold the woman together and come out of this gender bias questions like, you know, ask your family whether you want to be there or not. Will you be comfortable to take up a project or not? So it is that's why more important that you have a leadership woman at a leadership position in the technical uh, uh, companies so that they understand it and it is more responsibility of the woman to take care of their woman employee and not come up with this gender specific questions where you make the young girls uncomfortable with such thing along with your male colleagues. Uh, when uh, say it's like you know when you are one one is like saying you have one stick you can break it together but when you have five sticks together and you make it uh, like this, it's it, there's a power you bring in. So one woman herself in her own is very powerful. But when you come all together, you can definitely beat the world. Yeah. I think it's very important for the girls to take their own decisions. Don't wait for someone else to tell you what to do. Take your own decisions. You are very powerful. You have the more courageous. The most important thing about the girls or the women is that the God has gifted us with the instinct, which is very, very powerful. Follow your instinct, believe in self and take your own step. Don't wait someone to put a red carpet for you. You drive your own life. And for me, women are so beautiful and uh, 
uh, human beings, creative uh, after all. And uh, they are mothers like the uh, flower buds. You know, I've been admiring the flowers in this room. Uh, we are like flowers, but being a leader is something different, something very hard. You cannot born as a leader. You, you become a leader within the time with some of the uh, qualification you have, with some of the work you do, uh, and how you inspire people around you and girls, in fact. And uh, without realizing, you become a leader. This is what has happened in my life. I was just a research scientist working for many years, but I was always interested in different areas and women uh, and young girls, uh, talented young girls in schools or uh, in my area. So being a leader, a uh, woman leader is something um, not so easy. It's a difficult task. Once you are recognized as a leader, uh, one of the women leaders, people become uh, sort of, uh, they have expectations from you. They expect you to be a perfect model, role model, which is, uh, again, it comes through the time. It develops women leadership. And you'll have to have a vision. And like Muni said, you'll have to share this vision. You'll have to be a good communicator. You have to communicate. How we are doing now, you know, we are com communicating among our members in Turkey and we are communicating with international ladies and uh, women in uh, Russia, women in nuclear in Russia. And you'll have to be cooperative. You must cooperate in many issues, not only uh, related to your career. You must cooperate to be a good leader. And also you must be a reliable person. People must rely on you, you know, with your uh, acts, with your talks, with your lifestyle. They must rely on you. However, it happens. You know, it's not a compulsory. It is how people think about the leaders. And you must be accountable. And these are some of the specifications of safety leadership as well. So uh, over the years, when I felt that I, uh, people were recognized me as uh, one of the women leaders in the field, so I started doing more and more and more work. So I also started doing some uh, training and consultancy on leadership and safety leadership in particular. This is the area that I love. You know, if you are in the nuclear uh, field, You'll have to be a safety person, naturally. And uh, being a safety person means that you'll have to have a large, very large uh, angle and very large spectrum in life. You'll have to uh, approach every problem in or every issue in a probabilistic way. You'll have to uh, always think about the probabilities and consequences. So it gives you very uh, large insights and in-depth thinking. So in this way, you become, uh, you know, uh, more and more active with the people around you. As I said, uh, you cannot born as a leader. Some people think that people born as a leader, but I don't think it. You become a leader with your lifestyle in what you do, what you achieve in your lifetime. So I think in each country, people have different social environment. They have different cultures, different beliefs. So uh, again, leadership uh, issues uh, also depends on the society itself. I think in each country, we can uh, try to introduce some leadership models and role, role models are very important. I mean, uh, in my life, for example, uh, when I was a student, my talk, I said my first love was not a handsome guy, was not a pop star, was not a you know a famous actor. It was a reactor sharing of radiation. So I was so impressed. Then uh, my role models were some uh, women scientists in Turkey, and also like Madame Curie and other well-known ladies who achieved so much for the society. And again, you know, uh, in each country there may be uh, different role models, but you'll have to give this uh, feeling of inspiration to the young girls, I think. I think time has been changing now. Uh, now different attitudes can be observed in May all over the world. 
uh, in previous years, always men were in front of the women in leadership in every field. And uh, of course, to be a leader, uh, you don't have to be physically strong, but mentally you'll have to be you know, at least equal to men and you should go further uh, to become a leader. It's very important. There are some many other qualifications one needs to become a leader. Uh, as I said, time has been changing and all over the world now, um, organizations and uh, CEOs, uh, male CEOs and managers and top level administrators, they always seem to support women uh, getting one step further. They really recognize women leader leadership in uh, nuclear industry and other industries as well as politi politicians uh, and as well as CEOs. In many uh, different areas, you can find, you know, distinguished women uh, names as CEOs and managers, top responsible uh, person. I think uh, time has changed. Find some energy to do more, to act more for the world. They must uh, pay attention to changes around them, global changes, what the world needs, what their country needs, what the society needs. And uh, we need really uh, hardworking, talented women if we want to save the world and if we want to have better lives. It's very important. If the young girls especially, they have the feeling of responsibility that they can do something more for their families, for their local people, for their country and for the world in general, I think uh, from there on there is no way to stop them. They will go further and further uh, and uh, hope that nobody will stop them, uh, you know, going one and step further. To me, female leadership is about personal growth, personal development, because a leader, a male or a female leader alike, is a person everybody is looking up to, every, the person everybody is looking at. I mean, you can be very professional, very competent, have a lot of expertise, but if you don't have some particular personal characteristics and features, it may not really work. In fact, judging from my own experience, I should say I continuously work on my personal growth and personal development because I had a public organization. We do a lot of social work and we work with people who are looking at us. They form their opinion about us from looking at us. And that's exactly why I believe working on our own personalities is so important. We do a lot of work to involve women in nuclear research in the nuclear sector at large and our universities, our ministry, our specialized enterprises, our public organizations are doing a lot to ensure this. In fact, the schools do a lot because that's where this engagement of girls begins. I mean, that's where we involve girls into public health, into nuclear research, into all kinds of walks of life. That's where all these enterprises start. In fact, it's a huge endeavor. It takes a lot of work and input from the speakers, the invited lecturers. It's all about increasing the number of teaching hours it takes to become a professional in a particular area of expertise. It's all about involving the trainers, the consultants, the coaches including those who work on personal growth. It's about learning to speak in public. It's about learning to be open and to feel free because we've had some very intelligent intellectual girls who've had lots of insecurities and have been very withdrawn. And also it's about motivation. We've had many cases when we've had a girl who gets interested in stuff and she brings along her 
female friends. Like, for instance, I've talked about a book, uh, which initially was an idea proposed by one of our female students, but she got just so interested in taking this forth that she did. In fact, we work a lot with social clubs, with uh, specialized academic uh, clubs to engage women and girls in particular into um, these professional areas. I mean, we tend to involve girls into our debate and discussion clubs, for instance, especially the senior school female students. So we had this girl who got so interested in this book that she worked a lot with her female um, fellow students and her friends. And as a result, the number of after school classes in robotics, for instance, doubled. I believe that was very much thanks to her interest, engagement, and leadership. So we start working at schools, then we do it at higher education institutions, and then out on the site uh, at enterprises. And also we're taking it up to the global international level. We have a win branch in Kazakhstan. It's a win a global branch. And in fact, this year they launched one for Central Asia, including four uh, Central Asian states. And I believe we will see a lot the fruit from this. In fact, there are lots of stereotypes around the belief still that many areas of specialization and professions are for men only, like mathematics and physics are only for men and boys because they are so analytical minded and they like engineering and all this kind of stuff, unlike girls. Well, we're just seeing how this myth is getting debunked. In fact, many speakers have mentioned that girls tend to even do better in their final school exams than boys in physics and mathematics and in sciences in general. For instance, at times we see the new IT universities um, where lots of students are actually female. And in fact, female students get so attracted to um, the IT studies because the world is moving on, research is moving on, the new specializations are coming up and girls get so interested in all of this, they want to be part of it, they want to be in. Now there is another stereotype whereby a girl, a woman is the hearth keeper in the first place, a mother, an educator, and I believe it's only beneficial for women and for the society because a woman seen as a hearth keeper and seeing herself as a hearth keeper actually inspires more trust. She can be extremely useful in breaking these stereotypes. And that's why in all kinds of public work, we see so many more women these days because they are making a huge contribution into involving women into such a complex area of work and research. I believe women should get together not only into professional communities. I believe it really matters. Regardless of where we live, regardless of what language we speak, I mean, we're all working for the same shared cause. It's all about improving the lives for people wherever they are. Women are brought together by their role, the role they play in their respective families. It's the role of the mentor, the educator for their children. It's the role of a mother. It's the role of a hearth keeper. And there are so many other things that bring women together, whatever language they speak and whatever country they live in. Let me just give you an example. In, in Kazakhstan, we bring together women based on their professional activities and interests, but also based on their hobbies and leisure activities. And when we started doing this, we were just amazed at how many more things our women can do. And they excel at them. I mean, they bake, they sew, they knit. I mean, these are just the standard things attributed to women and associated with them oftentimes. But they do some outstanding things, like for instance, for instance metal work. They carve lace out of metal and they're so intricate and so delicate looking, the pieces they produce. Even more so, they want to teach the others to do this. And that's why I believe uh, communication among women internationally is extremely beneficial for all of us in terms of sharing their skills, their expertise, but also in terms of boosting this powerful force that can bring the world together. When we see the first year students, for instance, or our applicants and tell them about nuclear research or women in science, they feel at a loss. They say, well, 
that's not for me perhaps you know i should be doing something easier perhaps i'm not good enough for it and like i've said before we ought to just take a minute to look around and to realize that many of the things that surround us were in fact created by women so every time a woman creating things would ask herself what if could we do it in a different way can it be that that's a very important question for a woman to ask herself because you know inventing things coming up with new solutions is not just about making new things it's about being creative and constructive and that's a true gift to women from the nature that's their natural instinct and ability every time a woman makes something you does something you she improves the world around us